right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. My name is Christopher Harrison. This is Web Wednesday, the show where we talk about uh, all things web dev. And today I'm really happy to be joined by uh, John Papa. And for anybody who's not familiar with John Papa, John Papa, I think, knows everything about everything when it comes to uh, to web dev and uh, and front end frameworks or at least that's that's certainly the way that uh, that it feels um, and he's joining today to talk about one of actually I shouldn't even say one of this is my favorite front end framework and that is uh, svelte uh, if you haven't already had the chance to play with this framework uh, I think you're going to find that it feels or at the very least it feels to me very natural as a uh, as a JavaScript developer Developer um, in a way that I really haven't uh, been able to experience with, say, uh, Vue or uh, or React. That it feels very much just like I'm creating an HTML page. But you didn't come here to listen to me talk about it. You came here to talk uh, to listen to John talk about it. Especially since I apparently can't finish a, a sentence. Uh, so let's go ahead and get John on here um, and uh, and start uh, down this path. So John, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Hey, thanks for having me, Christopher. I'm I'm excited to talk about it. You and I are both very giddy about Svelte, so let's go. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a certain level of of, of geekiness if you're getting giddy about uh, like like a framework. Like this is this is what gets us going here. Certainly is. I mean, it's it's one of these days now where like JavaScript frameworks. For a while, it was like a framework a week felt like it was coming out or a day. Uh, but it's really settled down, and there's really four main frameworks these days with React, Vue, Angular, and Svelte. And there's some other honorable mentions, but I feel like these four really are so good and high quality that, you know, let's introduce people to Svelte and show them why it's so awesome. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I have to say, just as a real quick aside there, um, since you mentioned that we're sort of like down to, well, sort of down down to four, that it's it's nice because it makes it then easier for somebody to enter in because it, the, the choices become at least fewer, um, if not necessarily as clear as as one one might hope there. So it's nice to see, you know, a little bit of, of okay, let's, let's, let's narrow things down here. I agree. So um, with that, what is, what is felt? Well, I just happen to have brought a little bit of information about that today, <laughs> ironically. How convenient. <laughs> yes. So let's kind of just walk through some basic stuff here. I, I talk about what it's felt to folks a lot. And one of the best ways to talk about it is it's the easy on-ramp into web programming. If you really want dynamic applications, Svelte is a great way to go. Uh, and we're going to really give everything that people need to get started right out of the gate. Uh, so kind of going from there. My fingers will work. The big <laughs> differentiators, I like to break things into three, the rule of three. Um, everybody wants to write less code. Well, maybe not everybody, but the less code you write, the less mistakes you can make, the less bugs you can have, the less maintenance that you've got, the less refactoring, and frankly, the easier it is to get going, right? Svelte's all about that. Uh, we hear about the virtual DOM all the time with, with things like with React and whatnot, and that's great, but uh, Svelte doesn't uh, deal with the virtual DOM. So we're going to take a look at what it does. What is a virtual DOM? Just real quick there. Uh, it is. It's a good question. So the DOM itself is a document object model. Every browser has a DOM. Uh, and years ago, a little bit of history for folks, the DOMs in the browsers were different in each version of each browser and in each browser, which meant as a web programmer who no longer has hair, there was one point in my life I was actually coding with a lot of if-then statements in JavaScript for every version of every browser, and it was not fun. Um, the <laughs> virtual DOM is effectively a DOM that sits side by side with the DOM, and you can kind of manipulate what's going on with it and then kind of insert it into the DOM itself. It's a way to make updates and get rid of Flickr and refresh and make the browser go faster. OK. And Svelte doesn't do that. No, it does not do that. And that was a, it's a very, it's not a bad thing. It's that it, uh, it that to use a virtual DOM, it's just that it doesn't need to do that with what it's doing. Uh, and it's got this concept called reactivity out of the box. And reactivity is a funny word because it makes you think, well, it's React, you know, <laughs> the React framework. Uh, or maybe it's Rx, you know, people talk about uh, reactive extensions for .NET or JavaScript. No, reactivity is effectively just this, put very simply. Chris, if I slap you across the face, which I can't do here, let's emulate it. Here, ready? Um, <laughs> go. Boom. <laughs> 
the reactivity was Chris moving. <laughs> Christopher moving. <laughs> yes, Christopher, excuse me. So when Christopher got hit, there was a reaction and it caused him to move in a different direction. Uh, and this is, think about this with the web applications. With web applications, when something changes in the web app, you want that to react to the changes and then show the different data. Great example is you go get a list of customers in your code, you put it into React, or sorry, Svelte, and you want Svelte to react to those changes and then show them on the screen. Reactivity just works out of the box. We don't have to worry about updating or refreshing or repainting, for example. Does that make okay. sense or did I totally gobble that? No, that, 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 makes, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. And I apologize for messing your name up, Christopher. That's all right. <laughs> you can call me Jonifer if you'd like to now. So. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a nutshell, Silt is just a web framework. Uh, and I say web framework specifically because it's not a JavaScript framework. It's a web framework. We got to treat JavaScript, HTML, and CSS all on equal footing here. So it's a web framework that manages the web. It compiles your app into mostly what we call vanilla JavaScript or HTML and CSS. And we say vanilla because that's just a, uh, it's a conventional way of saying that there's nothing special about the JavaScript, HTML, or CSS. It's plain old JavaScript, HTML, and CSS with no special Svelte stuff in it. And I think you'll see what I mean when we get to the code in a moment. Okay. So the first thing to look at is what is Svelte? Uh, Probably the weirdest part about Svelte, and Vue has this too, is the name of the file. The name of the file has an extension .svelte. And the editors are smart enough to know that this is a Svelte file. And you'll see why this is important when we get to the code. So let's say we're creating a hero. I like doing things like heroes and villains as my examples. And let's say we're putting a hero together. Well, we want to give the hero a name. So we have script code. We create a script tag, it's just regular HTML here. And we create a variable called hero, and we set it to my son's name, Landon, because why not? It's Anything any questions so far? How, how, how's that looking? Yeah, no, that looks good. That looks good. So we start here, and we end up getting basically just the script is our code. Well, remember, we have JavaScript, HTML, and CSS make up the web. So there's our JavaScript, right? Mm -hmm. Next, we've got our HTML. What are we going to display? Now, everything in here looks very normal, except probably the hero with the squiggly braces around it, the brackets. And as you might have guessed, the hero is the variable that's up in the code. So this is, uh, people call this a lot of different things, interpolation or you know, variable switching. or The reactivity of Svelte, what's happening here is when it sees that the word hero is changed to Landon, it's going to find every place in the HTML where it's referred to as hero in those squiggly brackets, and it's going to replace it. That's the reactivity, okay. and there's nothing you have to do to make that work. It just does. And you know, one thing I notice um, uh, that's that's I think different from uh, a lot of the other frameworks is there was nothing special about that variable that you declared. That it's just simply let uh, hero equal Landon, and that's it. Like you didn't have to um, you know mark that as anything stateful or anything special. That's exactly right. The best part about Svelte is what you're not seeing. You're not seeing anything special. There is no like um, Svelte model attribute or any kind of uh, decorators in TypeScript, um, other popular things that you see in, in other web frameworks, which are fine. I mean, I use those things in other mm -hmm. frameworks. But the nice thing about Svelte is you don't have to learn. The conceptual count is very small. Yeah. I mean, if you know a little bit of HTML, a little bit of JavaScript, and please learn a little CSS as well, right? <laughs> well, to display it, there you go. Those three things together can go in one file in Svelte. And some people might say, well, how can you put it all in one file? Well, I'll get a little bit of architectural soapbox here. I like small components. The smaller the component, the easier it is to debug, to maintain, to reuse everything. I could not agree more. It's also just more reusable at that point as well. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the gratuitous link tree that we yeah. can give to people. So, 
Uh, but I'll get off that. We can go look at a real application if you'd like to. Um, actually, go back to real quick to that last slide with mm -hmm. with the code on it, just because there's one last little thing I want to highlight mm -hmm. is like if if you handed this like like you said, you know, um, have somebody just learn a little bit of of JavaScript, HTML, CSS. If I handed this to somebody who that was all that they knew, like they just knew a little bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like it wouldn't feel that weird to them. It it wouldn't look all that strange that about the only thing that would sort of jump out is that there's a style tag, which honestly there probably should have been in the original spec of HTML anyway, and those those little curly braces. But otherwise, I mean like all of that just looks normal. Yeah. And you know, we normally put our style tags in our HTML with a link to a file, right? Right. And you can still do that. I mean that's you can still do those kind of things. Um, what's happening here without getting too far into the like next level of where Svelte is, is those styles are scoped to the hero component. And that's how we refer to the hero.svelte file. There's a hero component that shows the hero's name. That's what this does. And we want those styles to only apply to the code on this particular page. So that's why those styles are here. If you don't have that requirement, like if you have a global style sheet that covers your entire website, you could eliminate that code and and then your component is literally six lines of code. I I find myself doing that less and less of that global. Like I I I haven't fully gotten into Tailwind yet, but one thing that I really like about it, we've we 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 had another uh, uh, show about uh, about Tailwind. But one thing that I really like about it is it's like just describe how you want this to look instead of trying to create these classes for like um, you know dialog box. I'm going to create a class like that. Like don't do that. Just Here's a whole bunch of classes and just yeah. describe what it is that, that that you want it to do. And I've I find myself doing that now with like my Svelte components is that I'm just gonna worry about this and just make that look good. And I find it it then makes it easier for me to do my my CSS. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. You know, honestly, I do my styles and my components now too, where I, I didn't used to do that. Uh, but I do reserve some things. So for example, we saw on this one here that the H1 is a certain color, a font, and a weight. If I find myself doing that in four or five components, I might as well take that H1 at that point and move it up to a global style sheet if everything's supposed to have that. Right. I think I start small and then I expand because what I don't want is, hey, let's make the whole background pink on this component, right? <laughs> and I put that in a global style sheet, everything is pink all of a sudden. You're like, oh, wait, what happened? That's also just like good programming practice, like start small. And if you find yourself doing something over and over again, then go ahead and, and yeah. pull it out. So you're doing that that same thing here. Um, the other real quick question that I wanted to ask before we get into the uh, into the demo is about a progressive uh, framework. So I know like with Vue and with React, and I, I honestly haven't done Angular, so I don't know about Angular, but at the very least with Vue and React, I know that you can add it into a file. So you don't need to use a JSX file. You don't need to use a Vue file. Is that true with Svelte as well, or are you required to use a, a Svelte file? Like if you wanted to use pieces of Svelte inside of an existing like PHP page, for example, it, or HTML page? Exactly, yeah. There are ways to do that. I haven't done that uh, myself, but um, yes, there, there are ways to do that. Vue especially is really good at that. Yeah, okay. Cool. I'd have to, so I'll get back to you. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Um, how about a demo? I think we could do that. I've got two demos and I'll, let's just show you the one that's up on the screen. Uh, I like to show what it does first. So here's Hello World. It's just a Svelte tutorial with a list of heroes. I like my heroes. <laughs> and you might recognize some of the names. <laughs> and when you select one, you can then edit the name down here. So we'll change um, Big's Dark Lighter to Christopher. <laughs> and you're going to be born in the same year. And then I can save this one if I want to. That's not hooked up. but. You'll notice that the data down here does not reflect what's happening up here because they're in different places and we'll kind of look at that. Okay. So that's the application. Let's kind of go side by side. Here's the actual app that's running it. We'll go full screen so we can see more. The place to start with these, and let's close that down, is just to look at the folder structure. I'll zoom in even more because we're gonna take a look there. And this is in a GitHub repo, so we can share this out with folks uh, as well. Mm -hmm. The first thing we do with Svelte app is they generally tell you to create it from a, a GitHub repo. So up here, they show you where it is. This is where the GitHub repo came from. 
Uh, we can go get that. It's at GitHub on line seven. It's felt JS template. And there's instructions on how to go get that. That's what's here on line 12. So if people are wondering, how did I get this app first you know, pulled together? This command from a command line will create an app for you. Um, let's move to the next step. It generates this folder structure. And in that, we get a package JSON. Now, I like to look at the package JSON because this kind of tells you what's going on. Uh, it's got some scripts. We're going to be running this uh, dev script. That basically runs it with, and when changes happen, it'll actually update for us automatically and recompile. That's what the W means, means there's a watcher. It'll watch the file, so as we make changes, it should restart it. And then there's dev dependencies and dependencies. Notice there's only one runtime dependency. And because my app has no server, and I want to run it locally so you can see it, Christopher, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a dependency called serve CLI, but normally there'd be none. There'd literally be zero runtime dependencies in the self app, which is pretty mind boggling if you think about it. That, that, that really is, because I know at the very least with like React that you have that, that React and React DOM as dependencies. So going back to your original point, this is then at, at build time, uh, compile time, emitting that raw HTML CSS JavaScript. Yes, I'm, I'm glad you emphasized that because that's why you'll notice here, other people might think Svelte on line 18, wait a minute, why is that a dev dependency? Like, don't you need Svelte, like it's runtime to go to the browser? and well, yes and no. So at compile time, it's using rollup. Obviously, there's a lot of rollup going on. Um, and the creator of Svelte also created rollup. So thus, that's what's happening. Um, so Svelte at compile time gets compiled into your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And then it ships that, those assets, up to the browser. And there's little, there is a little bit of Svelte runtiminess that gets shipped in those files, but it's really, really tiny. And when I say really, really tiny, I've written Hello World apps in Svelte that were like 4K. I mean, it, there's not a lot going on there um, in the application. That's impressive. One other side note, Christopher, is that I mentioned Rollup. You can use Webpack with Svelte as well. There's templates to do that, because I know people like Webpack. Uh, and I'll be remiss if I didn't mention that the next version of Svelte, um, there is a, gosh, I think it's a beta right now of Svelte Kit. So you and I have had some chats about this. Svelte Kit is effectively the next version of Svelte, which includes a CLI and a bunch of other things that come with it. We're not going to get into that today. Um, apps that run in Svelte today will run with Svelte Kit. So that's all you need to know about that. Yeah, Svelte Kit is pretty slick. I've, I've played around with it a little bit. It's it's pretty slick. Yeah, and the next thing to think about is like the folder structure. Uh, source is source code. <laughs> That's where we put our source code. <laughs> um, we don't need that. Scripts is there because of the way TypeScript works right now. This helps us kind of get there. That's something that probably would go away. I don't even think it's there with Svelte Kit. I don't think that it is. But yeah. But let's let's ask the question real quick, mostly just to make Aaron Powell um, happy. Is sure. Does Svelte uh, support TypeScript? Absolutely. Just not for people named Aaron Powell. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'll, we'll give a quick glimpse forward. If we look at this code, did I do TypeScript in this app? Let's see, where's the code? Do, do, do. I don't think I chose it, but let's see if I did let name string equals Christopher. Ah, too much stuff going on. Uh, nope, this one does not support TypeScript because I did not choose it, but I do have one that has it in it. Yeah, I know there's no editor. Okay. <laughs> I like to look at the folders first because it gives people an idea of what's there. Uh, and I'm going reverse alphabetical. Public is what gets served. This is what's going to end up on the web. So here is, like when I say it's just CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, this is the HTML. That's the index page. There's some global CSS that I pulled in, uh, a favicon. And then the build folder has the CSS and JavaScript that are bundled that get created through the Svelte compilation process. And you can see it's just standard JavaScript um, and you're not expected to look at this or run this, but you know, the browser will run this part. Uh, and then we've got node modules, which is any dependencies and VS Code is just a configuration folder. Roughly about 50 gigs or so. Uh, yeah, no, it's node modules, not VS <laughs> yeah. Code, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, node modules, 50 gigs, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then the source folder is the interesting stuff. There's four main files in this app. 
Main is where we start. And that's pretty consistent, I think, through Angular, React, Vue, and Svelte, right? Yeah, or, or some, some sort of a bootstrapper. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a bootstrapper. And I could have looked here to say, hey, is it supporting JavaScript or TypeScript? There's the first hint. <laughs> it's a JavaScript file. So because this is 101, hello world, I just chose JavaScript. That makes sense. And now what this does is it says, OK, a couple of key things here. And let's just get rid of that for a minute. Um, and why did I have two of these in here? That's interesting. <laughs> so uh, what we've got here is every pattern you'll see out of these files is they'll be exporting something. So whatever's in this file is being exported as what's known as a JavaScript module. Uh, and everything in this file ends up being, if somebody refers to main.js, which Svelte is looking for main.js, uh, that's how it's connected, as its starting point, it's bootstrapper. It says, by default, the thing called app is what you need to run. Now, I could have called it foo and named that foo up here, but that's what it is. And then app, you create a new app object. And the app object is something that is um, you're referring to with, um, with, a, with a Svelte component. So there's a Svelte component called app, which is like your root component. We're saying create this new root component and put it, that's what target means, in the document's body. So we're literally going back to, you imagine this works. We're going back to this index.html page. And somewhere in here, there's a body. And it's going to replace the body with our Svelte app. OK. So then that would also imply that if I you know, only wanted to put it on like a, a, a smaller portion of the page, that I could use a selector and just go grab whatever that element yes. is and put it there. OK. Yes. And I'm, I'm only being a little cagey because I just haven't done it. So yeah. I don't want to give 100% yeah. there. <laughs> so then we have to then say, well, what the heck is this app thing? Well, app comes from app Svelte. So let's just go look. I'll close some things there. So here's app Svelte. And by the way, let's, let's blow people's minds. If you haven't tried this in VS Code, there's a feature called Zen Mode. Have you used that, Christopher? I have. Um, I, I know that this makes me relatively unique. I'm, I, I don't know why. I'm just not a fan of Zen Mode. It's definitely something to get used to. Let's show people what it is, get to kind of see where it is, and we can come out of there. If you hit F1, it brings up the command palette. I can type Zen Mode. And there's a keystroke for it too, and go there. And it just shows people, it's like, it's like a distraction-free mode. Mm. So we can only see the thing we're looking at. Uh, and we'll stay here for a minute, and then we'll come back out. Uh, this is the app component, the main root component. And there's a couple things in here. You'll notice first that I'm exporting a name. It's a variable, which says world. So you can imagine I've got hello world, and I can change the thing from world to Christopher. Mm -hmm. I've also got a hero object. It's just plain JavaScript where I've got a hero called Landon, and he, my son is 104 years old, apparently. Wow, impressive. <laughs> you look pretty good for having a son that's that's 104 years old. Especially since I was born, apparently, 22 years ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, And then there's our heroes, myself, my wife, and my dog. <laughs> so. Nice. <laughs> just some basic, you know, uh, we got a variable, we have an object, and we've got an array, just to kind of show the different things that we have. And then that's the code. Now, if I take that, you can see the code. Then here's our HTML, and here's our CSS. Opening up the HTML, we've got hello name. Remember, name is the variable called world by default. Mm -hmm. We've got some basic HTML down here. And then we've got this thing called heroes list. This is where it gets cool. Like, you can take heroes list component that is showing a list of those heroes, Luke Skywalker, et cetera, R2D2. And that component's in another file. And what we're doing is saying, go take that other component and put it into this spot on the HTML page. So this main gets put in the body because we learned about that just a moment ago. And then inside of the main, the heroes list gets put inside there. And so creating a component is, is sort of like then just creating your own cool HTML tag. Yes, it's exactly an HTML tag. And you wonder, how does it know? Does the browser know what that is? That tag never goes to the browser. That tag is effectively replaced before it gets there. Because here's the hero's list. And what we do is we come up here. It says, what is that? It's coming from this other file, which I think I can hover over. And now I'm in, I, I hovered over it, hit control or option and hit uh, my mouse. 
Now notice I'm in Hero's list cell. It's a different component. Mm -hmm. And in here, again, just to show folks, we've got our code. We then have our HTML, which should have a down arrow there. Oh, I don't have a wrapper. That's why. Uh, if I put all this inside like a div, it'd be a wrapper. So we've got our code up here, a bunch of funky things going on, which we'll explain. And then our CSS. In the code itself, notice the hero list also has a hero detail. So we can constantly build our, what we call a component tree because it's taking components inside of components inside of other components, and thus we have an application. Mm -hmm. So here I've got an empty variable called selected hero. Uh, I have a get heroes function, which goes out and gets my heroes across the API. Uh, and it's a promise because it's asynchronous, so I have a promise to wait for it until it comes back. Get heroes is just an async function. Again, all just JavaScript. And I'm using the fetch API, which, this bears us talking about for a minute, Christopher, because the Fetch API is built into the browsers. So historically, we've used things like Axios or in Angular, we use the HTTP client APIs. We pull in other libraries or in jQuery even, <laughs> you know, to go get <laughs> our data. We can now just use the Fetch API that's baked into the browser, which also makes the app smaller. And then we get the data back as a response. We await the response. We await the Fetch. This gets us the JSON, the data, mm -hmm. and it happens to be inside the data is not just the uh, results, but there's also like error messages and status codes. And so we pull the data out and then we have a list of heroes, which if we come down to our heroes list, and I'll just show you the uh, then, there's this really cool syntax in Svelte that says anytime you see this curly brace, something's going on with Svelte. <clears throat> And then the curly brace means there's a Svelte command coming. What this one says is we're actually going to do an await on the hero promise. We don't have the array of heroes yet. So to get those, we're going to await for that promise to resolve. And when that promise resolves, we're going to get the hero list. But while it's not resolving, like let's say this takes three seconds to run, it's actually going to display heroes are in a galaxy far, far away. It's like a loading indicator, right? And then the second curly brace says, okay, this is related to the await. We say colon then. The colon's basically a continuation. It says, there's a command running this await. And when that's resolved, take the results and stick them in a variable called heroes. That's the array of heroes. And then here inside this UL, I'm creating a LI item, list item, where I go each of the heroes. I replace it with a hero variable. And then we just display those on the screen with hero.name. And it even has error, has error handling here. Like you can do a catch statement of, okay, the heroes didn't come and you can display something um, fun, fun to me. <laughs> the Sith have wiped out the heroes. Oh, bah. Uh, so that's kind of what happens to go get the data. And this is a little bit more than a 101, maybe, you know, level two kind of stuff. But because you don't need to do a wait and promises, you could do that in your JavaScript as well. But I find this to be uh, just an easier way to put the code together. I, I, I agree completely. And when I first saw Svelte, that was actually one of the things that really just blew my mind of just seeing that because of just that that kind of just real simple elegance of, of uh, you know, display your waiting message, here's the, the results, and then here's an error message should something go wrong. Because trying to do that with just, you know, normal JavaScript HTML without without a framework or trying to do that in a lot of other frameworks can get really tricky. And like if you're using function-based components in um, uh, in who's and what's it in in React, like just trying to get it to do an asynchronous call at at load time uh, right now is a little bit tricky. So the fact that all of that's just right there and and again in a relatively intuitive fashion of await oh, here's my loading message then here's the content I want to display catch and then here's the error message is just it's it's spectacular I love this I'm so thrilled that you put that in there. Yeah, it's nice because I'm a big fan, by the way, of demos. Uh, demos are demos, let's be honest. It's not production code. There's other things to do to harden your application, but I'm a big fan of because people grab your demos and they run them, showing them how errors work. 
because I don't know about you, but every app I've ever written has had an error in it somewhere. <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't show how to deal with errors, people don't know how to deal with them. So it's nice to, you know, I could have just cut this code out and made it simpler. Yeah, the app would still run. But now we get to see how simple it is to actually include some kind of error handling. I agree completely. Yep. Yeah. So let me jump out of Zen mode. Uh, I'm going to go Command Shift P again, or F1, and view down to here. So there's our heroes Svelte list. Uh, I mentioned that there was a hero detail. Remember that on line two? Mm -hmm. Let's see where that's used in this file. You'll notice at the bottom of the page down here. This is let me minimize some stuff so we can see it all together. Here's our list of heroes. There's our UL on line 26. Here's our iteration where we're going through and creating each hero and displaying them. Now, if we want to know what page we're looking at at this point, it's over here. This is basically rendering Luke and C3PO, et cetera. What's happening is we're, we're looping through and displaying them here on hero name. But when somebody is selected, we want to show that selection. So at the bottom of the page, when I select Obi-Wan Kenobi or uh, Aunt Baru here. We want the name and the birth year to be displayed and then this text at the bottom. The way we make that work is in the LI, we've got this on click. So on colon is basically saying we have an event handler we want to attach to this LI, this HTML element. And the hand, the event we want to attach it to is the click event. And these are events that are just browser events, DOM events. And the code you want to run, and I could have put this in a function, but I was trying to keep it simple. Arguably, it's harder this way. We leave it to you, you know, to figure out. <laughs> the curly brace means there's code. And here is basically a Lambda function saying, when click happens, run a function. I'm not passing any parameters in because I don't need them. And the function's return value is set the selected hero variable to hero. Let's think about what that's doing. The hero is the hero I'm on. So it's whatever row you're on, Obi-Wan Kenobi, R2D2, whatever, that's the hero. And I want to set that to a variable that's at the component level called selected hero, which is up here on line six. Notice it's blank by default. Now, once that selected hero is set, nothing else happens here, but down on line 45, we're saying, if there is a selected hero, then show the hero detail which is why we're seeing the details. So if I look at this app full screen again, if I refresh, well, I have to run the app to do that, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go run the app. Minor details. <laughs> Sometimes it helps to run your code, Christopher. <laughs> TIL. All right, so there's our app. And you saw how quick that was. I did it fast. It's npm run dev. I reran it. Now notice there's nothing at the bottom. That hero detail is not there. But if I select, let's go, go select Vader. Now you see it turned yellow and this name and birth year appeared at the bottom because now the selected hero exists. And every time I change the selected hero variable, reactivity is kicking in and letting the app know that we have to paint this stuff differently now. Right. So coming back over to here, the selected hero comes in um, and we'll take a look at the hero detail real quick. We go look at hero detail, which we're in that file now. The way you, you've you done React and Vue as well, you know the concept of props, Christopher? I do. Do you want to explain what props are to folks? <laughs> sure. So props are uh, this this concept on a uh, on a component where you can pass information into it. So, for example, um, you have your anchor element in HTML, and then you've got the href property. So I can pass in, hey, this is the URL that when somebody clicks on it, this is where I'm going to take you to. Uh, and so a prop and a component is exactly that. You can pass information into it. And in like React or in Vue, you have to to flag something using sometimes some special syntax to be able to say, hey, this is a prop that you can now pass into it. And now as John is about to show us, that doesn't happen in Svelte. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how it works. So on the left, we've got the parent component, the hero list. On the right, we've got the hero detail component. That's the thing that is going to be shown at the bottom of the screen. So on the left, you say, all right, Let's show the hero detail. If there's a selected hero, which we have one, 
Let's go and show the hero detail. And the hero detail has a variable, a prop called hero. Now, where is that? Over here in line five inside hero detail, there's the hero. What makes it a prop is the word export. So the way you make a variable, something that's a prop is an export. So for example, if I had another variable in here called name equals John, name is a local variable in the component, but it's not a prop. Hero is a local variable and it's a prop, meaning that somebody over here, when they use hero detail, I can say hero equals and then pass in the hero. I cannot say, I can type it, but it ain't gonna work. <laughs> I can't say <laughs> name equals Fred because it's gonna, you know, there's probably gonna be an error message somewhere saying, I don't know what Fred is. Let's scroll down and see if I was right. Uh, error message, unterminated regular expression. Yeah, it's, oop, probably because I got a, it's the wrong error. Yeah, it doesn't know what I'm doing, frankly, here. So <laughs> let's go like this and try to, really hard to make errors when you, know, you don't want them. Let's see. see what the error says now. Now unexpected tokens. Yeah, it's just confused. It doesn't know what's going on. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so hero is the prop. We're passing in our hero over here. It's equal to that selected hero's um, guy. That's what we're doing here, saying take the selected hero, pass it in as hero. Now, I could have named them the same thing. I could have said, all right, let's call it selected hero over there. If I do that, that's got to match. The right. reason I didn't do that is probably obvious right now. I don't know what selected hero is. Like, is it the thing over here? Is the thing over there? I, I like to be a little more unique. Now the hero is the prop on the hero detail and the selected hero is what's getting selected, uh, which then just gets displayed. So everywhere you see hero dot in this right-hand component, you'll see it here in the name and the birth year, mm -hmm. that's gonna display those parts of the hero and then also the, the name at the bottom. So we've pretty much shown like 85% of what <laughs> you need to know to do Svelte quite frankly in here. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. Um, that bind syntax, though, what's that bind syntax that you had? Uh, on which one? Like the hero? Uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, the hero detail. Let's go look at that one. And we we'll go full screen. Down here. Oh, the bind keyword. I got yeah. you. Yes, that's good to point out because this, this um, took me back a minute. There's not a lot in Svelte that originally took me back. Uh, when I say it took me back, it kind of made me go, hmm, for a minute. Let's play with this. Instead of me telling you what it is, let's create a div in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and let, let's just make sure it works. We'll put the word Christopher there. We'll flip over to our app, and we should see Cri Christopher show up somewhere on the page. Where are you, Christopher? That's, That's a, a good really question. good point. Where am I? Name. Label. Christopher, is the app not running anymore? Let's go look and see. No, it's there. Maybe it doesn't like your name. Let's put my name in there. That's fair. And we'll rerun. And I'm going to select. And it's not showing it there. Well, let's do something different because we need to make sure we can see it to actually show it. Uh, let's take below this div and we'll put it inside of an H2. We'll just write the word John. And we'll select somebody. And, oh, nope. I don't know why it's not showing up. That's a really good question. I'm going to kill the server. This is good debugging live. <laughs> and rerun it. That is really weird. There's obviously something I'm not doing. And we're going to go full screen. And it's... Sure, there's no error message. There it is. You know what it was? I 100% know what it is. Right here, disable cache when the dev oh. tools were open. My dev tools were not open, were they, Christopher? No. <laughs> so, folks out there, I've been doing this for 25 years. I still forget to open up my dev tools. Why is this important? Because I'm painting HTML and it's caching it because that's what the browser does. <sighs> So make sure your dev tools are open. Uh, by the way, you won't have this problem in production apps because you won't be changing your code live. 
<laughs> in production now. All right, we're going to keep the dev tools open because we're going to make some changes. By the way, Golnaz says hi. Oh, hey, Golnaz, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so let's go back over here. We've got John, but you wanted to see bind. So let's take a look at a variable. We have a variable called hero.name, I believe. Let's make sure that that's there. Uh, name equals hero name. We flip back over. We'll select R5D4, and there it is. So you might be wondering, well, why didn't you just do uh, on this bind up here? Why didn't I just do hero name? Why did I need this weird bind thing? Let's remove the bind and see what happens. Luke Skywalker. Um, Luke Skywalker is still there, Christopher. What's right. the problem? I mean, it's it's still working is kind of my point here, right? So yep. let's show this side by side. Oops. Let's show the bind and without the bind. The first one is the way you're supposed to do it. The second one is not. And the reason here is, is very subtle, but it's important. How does an input differ from a div or an H2 or a span? The, the ability to modify it. Exactly. The ability to modify. So by using line 15, we will be able to put the hero name in there, but Svelte will not be listening for any changes I make to the hero name at that point. So therefore, if I change the hero's name from Luke to uh, Leia, it's not going to listen. So the bind is there because that will let it listen as well as show the data. Um, okay. In Angular, they call this like an ng model, for example. And so, and and that it so it 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 gives you a two way binding then that if I modify the value, it will then go back into wherever wherever it sits, uh, wherever that variable sits. Yes, and if we okay. try to emulate this, we can do this real quick. We'll change Baru to Joe. <laughs> you can see Joe's down here. Right. If I change this here, oh, that's the birth year. Let's change this. Refresh again. Let's go back to Baru, and we'll change Baru to Sally. And you'll notice Baru and Sally are, it looks like it's all out of whack at this point. Right. Because of that lack of the bind. Okay. Yes. Sorry for the long explanation, but I like to show it instead of just talk about it. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely with that. Cause that's, that's then how it makes sense. That's how it makes sense. Yeah. And that threw me, threw me for a loop when I first did it. I'm like, oh man, I'm loving these curly braces everywhere. Let me just do that everywhere. And then suddenly my forms weren't working. <laughs> like, well, maybe I should read past page one of the Svelte docs. <laughs> read the docs. By the way, they have really good docs with a REPL built into it. Yes. Do you want, do you want to see those real quick? Yeah. All right, I think this link might bring us there. Svelte tutorial. Uh, so here's the Svelte tutorial. And you'll because, notice I still uh, have my dev tools open. And let's see if I can make it bigger. Oh, that's way too big. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So here they show like a basic hello world. What they've done here is they give you explanations how to use the tutorial. Let's go to the next one. And they kind of tell you what to do. They're like, all right, well, go ahead and add a name with world. You might recognize this from the one I just showed you. <laughs> uh, and then put this in here. And if you don't want to do it, you can be lazy like me and click the show me button. <laughs> and it'll actually put the code over here. So here we're seeing hello world and there's the name and we change that to Joe and you can see it's automatically reacting to that and showing it. That's perfect. No, I, I, that's honestly how I learned felt was, was going through that tutorial. And, and like to this day, I find myself constantly going back to it. It's good. And the REPL, um, I forget it, replace, evaluate, I don't know, pop a Landon. Pandas what? lemurs. Yeah. Thank you. Pandas and lemurs. Yes. <laughs> um, basically it's a place where you can type and then it shows you the changes and it's effectively the same thing that the console is in the browser, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's pretty slick. Cool. So I, I, I I'm going to put you on the spot ever so slightly. Um, and I know we've had this conversation before, so I, I, that's, that's why I feel safe doing this. Okay. So there's a, a question that came in earlier on Twitch. Let me go back and find it. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Um, from um, uh, from Jalitter, which uh, asks, does uh, Svelte have any advantage over, say, Angular? That is one of those fun questions, and I know you, <laughs> we definitely have talked about this. Yes. <laughs> let me let me kind of spin this a different way, because because um, why not? I would ask this a different way and say, what 
if I'm building an application and I'm trying to choose which web framework I'm going to use, what would lead me towards Svelte or Angular React Review? Let me first start with saying, well, do you know one of these really, really, really well? Then just pick that one and run with it and that's the end of the question. <laughs> that should be your flow chart. If I know React really well and I don't know the others, I'm not sure why I would look at another one, frankly. Uh, but there's other factors, like is your development team looking at this technology? Uh, is your company going in this direction? But let's say it's a perfect world and what you're trying to do is pick the right framework for you. If you're looking to learn something quickly, you can get into Svelte in less than a day and build an application that looks like this. I think this demo took me, first time I did it, I built this demo and it probably took me about four hours. And that was me reading the docs, looking at it, really trying to figure out what I wanted it to look like. Uh, now I can build this in about 10 minutes from scratch. But it really exercises most of what you need. So I'll answer that by saying that if you're trying to get into the technology quickly and you don't want to worry about um, learning a bunch of other concepts. Christopher, you were great at pointing out, but wait, I don't have all these, um, people call them reactisms or angularisms or viewisms. Right. Things that are specific to the framework, they're not littered throughout all of your code. There's very, very little about Svelte in the Svelte files. I think these curly braces are really the, the biggest thing, right? <laughs> that and the bind, Colin. <laughs> yes, and the bind, yeah. which yeah. told me through both of us for a loop. Yeah. But there's no, like with Angular, you got to learn, um, you have to do TypeScript in Angular, and you have to know what decorators are. And you really have to know what RxJS is uh, to use some of the features in Angular. And there's more to it. Now, the spin on that is that, okay, well, Svelte is easy to get into, but is it really just for Hello World, or can I build a real big application with it? Yeah, you can. I'll tell you this, New York Times, um, the, the original creator of Svelte is Rich Harris. I'll call out him, amazing person. Works in the New York Times. If you check out their online stuff, you'll see Svelte being used for a lot of their animated diagrams and web pages, and uh, it's fascinating. So you can definitely use Svelte for big apps. Um, I would encourage people if they're learning something new and they really want to have another skill in their toolbox, give Svelte a try. Okay. Cool. That's fair. Um, and then. Um, uh, 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 to also, um, highlighted the fact that, um, they really liked your, um, Angular sentence, uh, essentials pack in, uh, in VS code. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, and then the other question, and I guess you sort of, um, answered it, uh, already was, uh, Pradeus over in Twitch asked the question, is felt mature enough for enterprise applications? And it sounds like the answer to that is yes. Yes, it is. I'll tell you this, though. Like, if somebody asked me to build a Disney.com website today, uh, with the experience I've had, one thing I value is which web technologies have I used to build massive scale enterprise applications? I mean, you're talking tens of millions of users. In a situation like that, you don't want to take on a ton of risk. And risk isn't just the, the framework. It's, have you done it before? What, what don't you know that you don't know, you know? <laughs> it sounds funny, yep. but you, you don't want to have surprises along the way on something like that. And for me, like I've done that with Angular. I have not done a Disney or Walmart.com type site with Svelte yet. So for me personally, I don't know if I would risk it there. What I would look for is, is there a project that I can put this on where I've got a little more leeway so I can learn about, oh, how do I do CDNs with this? Or Hmm, how do I have lazy loading? By the way, you can do all that with felt, but you know, when you have to get to that point where you've got an app and you got to break it up and you got to make it more scalable, that kind of thing, I'd look for a little more time. Don't do it on the project that's due this Friday and it's a Wednesday. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I, I also just, I, I appreciate the fact that like in, in both of those answers is you highlight the fact of if, if, if you have a tool that you know well and it works and it will solve the problem, use that tool. Like there, there's no need to uh, to necessarily go out and, and learn something new just for, 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 for the sake of, of doing that for like a, a production project. And I think that that's something that we certainly fall into, uh, into the trap of quite frequently is, yeah. ooh, shiny, I wanna now go use this in, instead um, and don't necessarily have a good reason um, to get in and start using that. 
And Christopher, would you mind if I did a quick aside on a little bit of shameless plug? Uh, by all means. <laughs> so sponsored by Chevy. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, in the CELT application, there's a more complex app, which we're not going to show the details on. I want to give everybody the URL so you can check it out. If you go to, it's called Shop at Home. If you go to svelte.shopathome.dev, there's a live site running on Azure Static Web Apps. That's the plug. Um, <laughs> written in Svelte. Now, you can log in with, uh, that's not what I wanted. You can log in with Twitter, for example. And it's authenticated. Then you can look at like a list of products like strawberries, sliced bread, et cetera. And you can kind of see this Svelte app put together. If you decide you want to see, well, how would that work in Vue? If you go to the top and change the word from Svelte to Vue, voila, same application written in Vue. Um, you have to, they're different apps, so I have to re-authenticate with Twitter again. But now you can see that I've got the Vue app. Uh, here, I'll pull up the Svelte app. We'll put them spot side by side, make them the same size. And do this, there we go. And you can see that the same application just written in those two ways. And as you might have guessed, there's also a React version of the app, Angular uh, version of the app. And the reason I mention this is you can choose your own framework. You don't have to worry about, hey, is this tool going to work for this thing or, or for that one? All these frameworks are viable solutions, and they all work very similar. And you can actually look at the source code for these by clicking on the button that says Code in GitHub on any one of these. It's from the home page. I'll do that. So I click on Code in GitHub. You can see this John Papa shop at home. And in here, you can see the apps, Angular, React, Svelte, and Viewer here, along with a serverless functions in uh, Azure, just so we can run data. And people, if you want to deploy this yourselves, you can deploy from Azure from this button down here too. Love that. Very cool. Very cool. And 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 just also that that compare and contrast uh, there. Um, I, I have a feeling the answer is going to be no, um, or at least not off the top of your head, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, Jalitter um, follows up uh, the question, uh, looking at all four of those, and wants to know if you happen to know the bundle sizes of those. Uh, not off the top of my head, but okay. I, I've done comparisons of this. I've actually sent this oh. information to some of the web framework teams. I won't disclose which ones. Um, let's just say that it's not as obvious as you might think which ones are larger okay. uh, than others. I will tell you that Svelte is, in small apps, it's the by far the smallest, like an order of magnitude. But as you add components, I, I took an application that had 50 components in it. This one doesn't have 50. It's, I think it's got maybe 9 or 10. And a 50-component app is not that big. But once I got to 50 components, the Svelte app was almost the same size as the Angular View and React apps, which I found interesting. So the growth at the beginning was small, but as it got bigger, it grew much faster than the others. Whereas <laughs> Angular started out the biggest, but the incremental growth from three components to 50 was minuscule. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I did about two weeks of research on this that never went public because I didn't want to get into browser wars on the internet. So, <laughs> But I, I found it fascinating for myself to learn this. <laughs> Browser wars or framework wars, things you just do not want to get involved with. Exactly. <laughs> um, cool. So we've got just a couple of minutes left. Um, and I'm trying to think of another question. You've like you've answered the bulk of them. Is there any other like really cool uh, feature of Svelte that you don't feel like you showed off in that in that demo? Yeah, let's let's do it real quick. Um, opening another project, I'm gonna open up the shop at home app. Okay. There's something in there that I think is fascinating. So we'll see how fast I can get into it. Using TypeScript. That makes Using me happy. TypeScript. Yep. And you'll see interfaces in here and stuff. There's okay. something. No, don't show that again. There's something that called the store that Svelte will offer. Oh, um, yeah. And the store is effectively a way where you can store state. Uh, what does that mean? It means data that you need to ac access multiple times inside the browser. Uh, so when I go get the list of products, I'm actually storing that inside of a state variable, which has an array of products. And what I do is I update the old products with the new ones. 
It's effectively replacing whatever's in that list. And what does that mean? It means that this store itself allows my application, if it's got products in multiple places, it can constantly know where to go get that single source of truth. If you use like React or Angular or Vue, Vue uses Vuex. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that, so I call it Vuex. Uh, <laughs> React uses Redux, or it could use Redux. And in Angular, they use NGRX. Every one of these web frameworks has a store. Um, Svelte, thankfully, is very simple, and it's called Store. <laughs> a real clever name there. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually quite easy to use. Like, how do I make a writable store? Well, you make a store and you use the word writable. Um, how do you make a readable store? You use a readable keyword. So, <laughs> <laughs> seems seems pretty straightforward. Um, uh, ben uh, over at Microsoft Learn asked the the question: um, If Svelte is the newest out of the four, I believe it is the newest. Uh, so Angular technically reacts the oldest because Angular has been rewritten. So. <laughs> A little bit of trivia for you. Angular JS is the oldest, but Angular, the new version of it, um, is actually not as old as React. So React is the old man in the, in the group right now. Uh, <laughs> and then Vue came out not too long after those, and Svelte, um, I'm going to get the year wrong, but I'm going to say it's four years old. Um, okay. COVID time is weird for me, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still trying to process whether or not 2020 actually exists in my memory. Like, anytime I try to think back, it just there's just this black space. I still feel like we're in 2020. It's weird. Yes. <laughs> There's certainly a fair bit of that uh, as uh, as well. Cool. Um, where can people find you, John? Uh, right here in my house. I live at... No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm up on Twitter at, at John underscore Papa. Um, somewhere down over here. I can't ever find it. There we go. There you go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> find me up on Twitter. Uh, I like to answer questions. Um, if you got anything, you know, shoot them at me. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, and thank you so much for coming on. And by the way, since John didn't mention it, I'm going to highlight the fact that he's also got a few courses out on, on Pluralsight that you could go check out. Um, and has also created a lot of content on Microsoft Learn. Uh, so you can go check that out as well. Um, so yeah, thank you, John, again for, for coming on. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, just hosting you is is always wonderful for me. And talking about Svelte, which is you know my, my current favorite framework, um, is also a lot of fun. So thank you for for coming on and doing this this was great thank you for having me thank you and thanks for everybody for tuning in this is uh, web wednesday we're here every week 3 p.m pacific chatting about something web dev related so hope to see you back next week thanks bye